proposed a meeting with the Australian N uh, the American NRA. And uh, at that stage, he was telling us about the involvement that the NRA had with uh, Donald Trump's campaign in 2016. He'd indicated that uh, some of the technologies could be applied uh, to One Nation in order to assist with our campaigning. He had indicated that he was interested in helping the party and he had also indicated that those uh, conversations would take place uh, at the NRA headquarters in Virginia in um, the United States. We also were told um, as those plans got underway, we had indicated that Senator Hanson was not interested in going. Uh, he was very uh, determined to have representation from One Nation at that meeting, both for the Congressional Sportsman's Dinner, but also to introduce us to like-minded uh, gun organisations in America, as we have here in Australia, and uh, we accepted that offer. When we arrived in America, other um, meetings were also organised. One was with the uh, Coke Industries, which neither Steve or I were even familiar with, but Roger had indicated to us that they had been a significant tr contributor to Donald Trump's campaign to the tune of $800 million, and they were interested in meeting with One Nation. Um, we went to that meeting, like we did with the NRA. Uh, I certainly have a passion for understanding techniques that other political parties, as well as those organisations that assist political parties, the Greens use them, Labor use them and the Coalition use them. They make regular trips to the United States to learn of what those techniques are, and we felt we were no different. We felt that by visiting the NRA headquarters and learning from their experience during the Trump campaign, that would give us a better understanding of how we could better utilise the funds in which we have and also the skills in which we have and technology that we've developed as well. During that time, uh, we met with their camp uh, campaign team that was also involved at arm's length from Trump's campaign. Uh, we were led to believe that um, they used the same technology as some of the political parties here in Australia, namely the Coalition. Um, and uh, we spoke to them about why those techniques are used and which ones have been more favourable in the United States. They use robocalls, text messaging streams, um, live phone calls with their volunteers and ultimately they have a lot of foot soldiers over there. So the technology teamed with manpower were the two things that this party has one of but not the other and that's manpower. We then met with their social media team uh, who gave us an understanding of how they operate their social media behind the scenes. Uh, it was an in-depth conversation. Uh, they run their own TV programs. Um, we do similar things with our own social media here in Australia. So there was very little difference to what we were doing. But these conversations with the NRA were to look at nothing more than their techniques. This was not about sourcing money from the NRA. This was about sourcing technology, sourcing an understanding of how they operate, but never was it about seeking $20 million from the NRA. And the conversations that have been recorded where there is a, a talk of uh, $10 and $20 million, uh, I'll be the first to admit, we'd arrived in America, we'd got on the source, we'd had a few drinks, and that's where those discussions took place, not with any potential donors, no one but Roger Muller, Steve Dixon and myself. And then we were also taken to the Coke Industries meeting later on that week. That's correct. And just to clarify a lot of this, we've landed in the United States. This trip has been organised by Roger Muller, who again, I want to make this point very clearly, who was employed by a Middle Eastern country, Al Jazeera, to come to Australia as a spy to infiltrate into Australian politics. There are many, many things that were videoed, and I believe a lot of those things were taken out of sequence. And I'm going to make this point very clearly. I'm going to apologise to the people of Australia for some of the things that Roger Muller has taped me saying when we were having a few drinks at the bar at our local hotel. And uh, I don't talk like that publicly. We were three men talking together and we were having scotches for about three or four hours. And that, that is the truth of the matter. But as far as business is concerned, we've gone to America, we've gone to Virginia, to the NRA headquarters, gone through their museum. It wasn't a secret meeting, as was put forward by Al Jazeera last night. I put it on Facebook. I showed the world we were there. Everybody in this country knew we were there. I also did a, a video at the Lincoln Memorial 
talking about democracy. So the world knew that we arrived there. We never hit a thing. Uh, we have followed every rule and regulation. And there are a lot of statements that were put in clippets of that show that were on last night, and there'll be more probably tonight. Uh, firstly, I want to touch on the difference between legislation and regulation. I was put on media saying that regulation's easy, I can do whatever I like, it's like fighting a genie in a bottle. Regulation is done by every single minister in Australia. It is recommended by your department, it is put forward to you, and I was doing it every other day. That is absolutely the truth. Find one minister in Australia that doesn't do it and you'll shock me. Also a statement was made about the balance of power, uh, that one nation could have the balance of power, and we were asked the question by Roger Muller, what would, you know, how much money would it take for one nation to be successful? And I, I think I might have said $10 million. And, uh, I said if we were fortunate enough to get into government and have the balance of power, we would have the government by the kahunas. I won't use the word that they said last night, it's inappropriate for me to do so, but that means very clearly, and I don't know most men here understand that, that means you've got the balance of power. And I'll, I'll also fill you in on a couple of other things that were accusations made against myself. I've used the word kill on a number of occasions, and that means stop, kill a project, kill a program, uh, kill that deal, and that is stop. That's what it means to me. And again, if other people have misrepresented that or tried to misconstrue that, that's exactly what I was saying. I do use colourful language in my everyday life. I was born on the land. It is the way I grew up. But there are some swear words that I used in those undercover videos. Again, I apologise to the people of Australia for those use of those words. Uh, and I want to want to touch on, which I already have, the regulation. You will also hear that I talked about uh, people coming over from America to Australia to hunt camels, deer, wild pigs and I think wild dogs because they're pest animals in Australia. I was the Minister for National Parks, I understand it very clearly and I said I'm sure Australia would be very happy to have people come over here and help us eradicate those pests and I, I say that without fear or favour. There are a number of accusations that have been made but when you look at how this was put into place and I really want to bring this into context. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like this in my life. Not only was it the first time that I ever went to America, but to see that somebody had gone to the trouble from a Middle Eastern country, an Al Jazeera, paying a spy to come to Australia, set up Gun Rights Australia. I mean, this is the stuff you see in James Bond magazines. I would never, ever suspect you would see this for real in the real world. And I treated Roger, uh, Roger Mueller like any other bloke that I met, probably any of you fellas that I'd sit down and have a beer with. That's what I did. We took him on what his Facebook site was, everything that he'd represented in this country. And I'll be honest, I, I thought he was a pretty trustworthy fellow, sort of fellow who wanted to make sure that Australian gun laws stayed as they were at the very least, because we know that Labor and the Greens would love nothing better than to take all the guns off people in this country. That's the truth. I've been in Parliament. I've seen the way that the Labor Party demonises gun owners in this country. And you can look at my record. I've spoken a lot about that. And also, I want to touch on asking for money out in the public arena. I've done it on Sky News. I've done it on ABC Radio. I've done it just about everywhere I go. We are not a wealthy party like the Labor Party and the Conservatives and the Greens. We don't get money from China as both the major parties have, who somehow gave away the port of Darwin to a Chinese company. We don't get the money the Greens get from the WWF, from Greenpeace and all those or other organisations. Unashamedly, we need money to run election campaigns. And if anybody wants to misconstrue this, I'm not even going to try to do that. I'm just going to tell you the absolute humble truth. When I was asked, do we need money to run election campaigns, I said yes. And the fellow said to me, how much do you reckon it'd take to win an election campaign? I said about 20 million bucks. And I, I've said that on a number of occasions in this country. Um, James, is there anything else you want to fill in detail? Yeah, look, there's, there's no secret that uh, this um, next federal election is fast approaching. And I think that the timing of this report that came out, considering we went to the United States in September last year, nothing could be more damaging for a political party like One Nation as what we've seen today. And it is the result of a Middle Eastern news agency which has been banned in some of those Middle Eastern countries. And many of those emirate nations do not respect Al Jazeera. In fact, in America, both the major parties have deemed this so-called media organisation as agents 
of another country, not even media. So, look, we, we're very happy to present to you today. We're happy to answer your questions. Um, we are not hiding anything and we are very disappointed at the fact that a lot of our comments have been taken out of context. Did We're also disappointed... No, no. And we'll get to no. your questions in a moment. Support in kind. What I'll, Nothing. What I'll say who to you... Well, if you hold tight, buddy... No, who were, who were you seeking what we'll do... From? I want to make it very clear that during the course of this trip, we have always acted with integrity, we have always acted within the law, and nothing will change. We will always act that way. So you said um, there that you didn't seek money from the NRA. Who then were you hoping to get the 10 to $20 million from? That was a discussion, and you'll note during the recording, that was a discussion had during a drinking session with Roger Muller and Steve Dixon and I. That so was, who that was you, when, who were you okay? the money from? Well, Roger Muller had organised these meetings. This was a deliberate setup by the Qatari government under Al Jazeera. You, well, you, you asked a right? question, I'm going to give you an answer. He set these meetings up. This is skullduggery at its worst. This is the very first time Australia has witnessed political interference from a foreign government. OK, so you can't answer that, but... Um, you say political interference from another country, but you were seeking funds from the United States. There was America not the that was Australian politics. How is that not international? Well, no, no, no. Let, 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 let's bring that into context. But isn't that We're, international? Please, please let me bring it into context, if you may. As I said earlier, when I made my statement, the Labor Party and the Conservatives—they're on the record. They take money from the Chinese government, which is a communist country. We're actually a partner in the ANZUS agreement with the United States and also Britain. We've gone to a friendly country to find out about their rules and regulations relating to gun laws. We've gone to different organisations and met with them and talked about many, many things. We talked about uh, building the Bradfield scheme here in Australia. Uh, and, and, and an issue I should have actually so brought up... who were you seeking the money from? If it wasn't the NRA, who were you seeking millions of dollars from? It was not the uh, intent of the trip. The intent of the trip was to go and learn, was to go and meet with organisations over there. And it was not the initial intent of that trip. Okay. Mr you, Dixon, you said the ban on guns was like a poison. Do you honestly believe the ban on uh, guns? Uh, and like and please, poison? again, let's put that into context, a statement very clearly, and I've got the written document from Al Gazeera who asked me that question, and it's got, if guns are taken away from the Australian people, the ban on guns are about... That would be a poison that would spread to the United States if the guns were taken off the people here in Australia. So what I'm meaning about that very clearly, and that's what's stated in that document, the existing guns that we're allowed to have today, I am a shooter. And I made that point very, very clear. I would lose everything that I've ever worked for and believed in in my life if our guns were taken away from us in this country. And when it talks about spreading from Australia to the United States, I meant that if it happened here, there would be a very good reason it may end up happening in the United well, States. I'm sorry, I'm the guy with hearing aids. If you you've can... given us a timeline where you've said that Roger Mueller came to you, that he initially said that he wasn't interested in changing Australia's gun laws and then subsequently revealed that he was. Yes. That was before you went to the United States? Absolutely. So uh, what, what made you think that it was a good idea if those values aren't ones that you share? Well, Rod, Roger, Roger Mueller was an individual who ran a group called Gun Rights Australia. He has every right to his opinion. We, we deal with people every day of our lives who we don't agree with with everything, and I'm sure we all don't agree with everything here. But the truth of the matter is Roger Muller had presented an invitation for us to go to the United States to meet with a group of people, as all political parties do in this country, and we've gone over there without fear or favour. We've had conversations with many, many Surely different that groups. A willingness to um, exceed his position in some Excuse me. Surely that indicates a willingness to agree to his position. Ab absolutely no, not. No, not. I mean, I, I, Roger Muller was still in contact with me up until February this year, and I rang him to see how everything was going. I had absolutely no idea that he was a spy for an overseas foreign country working towards disrupting the next federal election. So what I, no what, hang on. what, what I want to make what very clear... Well, yeah. let's, no, 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 James, I, I yeah, need sure. to cover this question. Our policy is very, very clear. From the Queensland election, we had a 22-point plan. We have got a, a new policy for the Australian election, which we're going into, and we've gone out over a number of months getting feedback from shooters, shooters' organisations, even people like Roger Muller, who didn't put anything forward, uh, and also members of our political party. There's three main criteria that we've got in that policy, and it's a very solid policy. The first one is, if you steal firearms, you will go to jail. The second one is, if you are under watch 
as a potential terrorist in this country, you will have your guns taken off you. The third one is we are looking at having a 10-year licence, the same as your passport and your driver's licence, that will incorporate long arms, handguns, all types of firearms into one licence, like your driver's licence, where you can drive a motorbike, a car, a backhoe, uh, a, a B-double truck. Mr Dixon, where's Pauline Hanson? She's unwell, actually. She's actually quite is ill. Is she concerned about this? Um, what I will say about Pauline Hanson is the fact that any donations that are offered to One Nation Pauline has the final say, and I know this firsthand. I've had big tobacco companies offer us $50,000, and Pauline statement? Hansen has said, I will not take money from tobacco well, companies. Well, I think you've heard very clearly. She, well, she's she indicated Ill. already, no. She's quite ill. How much she could, How is well, she possibly could, but we're here to talk about this. Sorry, I'm, today. I'm missing. It was funded privately, so no, it was no expense to the taxpayer. Why was it done in a political exchange program? No, 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 there was none of that, and I took holidays as a result. And I remember cashing $1,000 privately of my money, and it turned into $708 US very quickly. Why would you talk donations from a foreign entity, the NRA no less, when that's exactly what Pauline values against foreign donations? Well, look, the, the bill that you're actually talking about, I think it was in October, it was... November. November, it was first mm. put forward to the Parliament. We were over there in September, and I, I'm a part of many meetings with our organisation when bills are put forward, pardon me, it's quite warm, when bills are put forward, they are looked at on that day. Our staff have gone through them like a five-tooth comb. They will put their recommendations forward. We will have a debate in the party room and we will decide which way we're going with that particular bill, regardless of what bill that is. And that decision was made at that time. We got back from the United States on the 11th of September, which is a very, very important day in the world's history, as we all know. And that was another very sad day. But that decision was made well and truly after we'd got back from the United States. And when you talk about uh, learning from their PR campaigns and how they do things, what do you make um, of their use of victims of these massacres for political advantage? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear the end what of that. What do you think of the NRA's um, use of victims of these massacres for political advantage? I, I don't, let, let's, let's make one point really clear. This atrocity that happened in New Zealand, I'll, I'll talk to that and I'll go to your, your selling question. The atrocity that's happened in New Zealand, there is not one human being that I know, I don't care which party it is, I don't care where you come from in the world, everybody thinks it's as abhorrent as I do. Nobody should ever kill innocent people. Let me make that point extremely clear. And if it should sadden everybody that people are taking political advantage of this matter and they're trying to drag one nation in as if we were responsible in some way, Absolutely not in any way. I, I detest murderers. I detest terrorists, regardless of where you come from in the world. That man was a killer, a terrorist, and personally, I'd like to see him put down. And I'm using slang now, which I shouldn't use. And I say exactly the same thing to the people who murdered our police officer down in Sydney, to the same fellow who murdered the people at the Lint Cafe. And I'm also quoted as making a statement that some Muslims in this country, down in Victoria are breaking into people's houses with bait bill bats and stealing everything they own and some Muslims has killed some people and I'm referring to the Sudanese that are breaking into houses down in Victoria and I'm referring to those people who murdered Mr Chang and also the people in the Lint Cafe. These are all very serious matters and we never sweep any of them under the carpet. For anybody to lose a partner, a wife, a husband is the worst thing that could ever happen and I oppose anybody should who we creates have, should murder. We have better access to guns? We, we've got our gun laws very, or I should say our gun policy is very straightforward as I explained to you earlier. We do not want any changes to the gun laws in Australia except for what I've just put forward before. And that, that's you a draw complete any... contradiction to what you've said that's come out in this documentary. You said that you want to get the guns into the hands of more Australians. No, no. What I've said very clearly is I do want to see guns in the hands of more Australians under the present rules we have in place. So that's with our guns for with... Australians. I, I would love to see more families get involved in sporting shooting. I would love to see more farmers be able to use handguns, which the Labor government in Queensland is actually restricting them from doing as tools of the trade. Do you think the Australian public wants that? Well, it, it's up to the Australian public at the end of the day, but living under the rules and regulations that were put in place by John Howard a number of years ago, which are the toughest gun laws in the world, yes, I do. I'm very happy to see Australians being able to own firearms in this country. Even up to New Zealand? Well, I, I am a supporter of firearms in this country. I mean, let's also bring this into context. We've seen a fellow in a car 
drive people down in Melbourne and also in Sydney. Two different events that have occurred. We've seen trucks used in France that have mowed 80 people down and kill them. Are we going to take every car and truck off the road? Do you think that's practical and sensible? I believe that every single person in this country has the right to abide by the law, to live within the rules and regulations of this country and under the existing gun laws, under the existing traffic laws in this country. And I think it's going to be very difficult to stop people from driving trucks over people. I think it's going to be very difficult to stop people making bombs and blowing people up. This is the terrible, terrible world we're living in today. We're terrorists and these absolute crazy people that have heinously killed these people in the United States and anybody who tries to push that upon one nation or blame anybody else for the what that fellow has done, they're barking up the wrong tree. Can I, can I just make... No, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add my part here. We have made it very clear. Um, we would like Al Jazeera to release all the footage to prove to the journalists, to prove to the public. No one likes being hoodwinked in this country. One thing that we have made very clear on those secret recordings that were made, we were not going to water down any of Howard's gun legislation. Steve had said it, I had said it, when these conversations about semi-automatics, about handguns for women, for men to carry on themselves on the streets of this country, we said it is not going to happen. We will not water down those laws. But that's in that has been contradiction to well, what this document Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you release, you get your best buddies with Al Jazeera ABC, so why don't you get the full statements and get it out on the record so that people can make an informed decision. You are not putting forward the facts. Night. Put yeah, forward the full facts. That's what's been required. You are a very facts. rude man who won't listen to in the facts. So we want the facts Pauline out. Hansen away from the media. Why do you try and keep Pauline Hanson away from the media? Well, that's just a complete false statement. Well, that's you, that's you, you have obviously says. been to the Australian Parliament. Pauline Hanson speaks more in Parliament than most well, politicians in the House. Says in these recordings. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, let's look at the record of Senator Pauline Hanson. She is the most honest politician in this country. She's the only politician in this country pushing back against over-immigration to our country. There are 230,000 people coming to this country every year and to bring that into context that's a city the size of Rockhampton and Townsville amalgamated together we have to supply the roads the hospitals the police stations the social infrastructure to be able to house those people when that video started this morning it pricked my ears very quickly when I saw one nation the party who wants to cut immigration in Australia and then the dots started lining up I believe this is a an overseas attack on a political party running an election that's only a matter of weeks away to stop the debate on immigration to this country. That's what I believe the basis Senator of this whole exercise was about. So you made a complaint about Al Jazeera. Can you tell us the basis for that? Is that under the um, foreign interference and espionage laws? That's something that's before ASIO and the Federal Police at the moment, and I'm not going to interfere with their investigation. I've actually made that statement, as I said, I think in this interview on so many different occasions on ABC, on Sky News, and I've done it over a couple of years. I've always thrown a throwaway line so that we can actually compete with the two major parties who take Chinese money, who take money from Greenpeace, the WWF, all of these different organisations all over the world. And I think it's quite unfair for anybody to try to single one nation out and say, well, they can all have overseas donations or they can all get donations, but you can't because we're going to scrutinise you. We're used to being scrutinised. It doesn't matter what we do, what we say, we get more scrutiny than any other organisation. And we're not afraid of that because we stay within the law, we have breaking no rules, there is not one cent that has come back to this country from the United States. Steve, do you draw any distinction between Al Jazeera Arabic, which is quite controversial, and Al Jazeera English, which has employed some of the most respected English language journalists in the world? Well, I, I, I think it may be their problem at the moment because the letter that I've got, it, it's got some headings on it and I know where it's come from, and this gentleman has been paid as a spy to set up a business in Australia which is, looks on the front of everything, and I'm sure every one of you, if you'd have looked it up when I did two and a half years ago, this is a Fair Dinkum Gun Rights Australia group and organisation. They've been around for two and a half years. We'd looked through their Facebook site. They've travelled all over the country to different gun shows, different gun clubs, communicating with people, doing videos. This gentleman also told us that he'd sat with Donald Trump Jr. at the last year's awards night that we actually went to this function last year. And I, I, I'm absolutely blown away. I would have never guessed in a million years 
that this guy was a Middle Eastern spy planted in Australia to infiltrate into Australian you politics. Say he's a spy. Could he? Um, could he in fact be a, a particularly outlandish journalist? I, I've no. I, I don't know what he is. So, but you're calling him a spy now. Well, I, I, I can't think. Well, of if any... he was a journalist, I don't know the last time you guys fronted up and didn't say who you were. Journalists present themselves as journalists. This bloke presented himself as a secret agent. Hey, actually, on that note, and I want to make this point clear, I had a call from an ABC journalist, I think it was last night or this morning, I'm not too sure, but he said to me, we would never do what those people have done, and it's absolutely unethical, but I've got to ask you these questions anyway. So I'm really pleased that Australian journalists would never do Mr. what Mr. this Ashby, particular person has done. Mr Ashby, um, does um, Brian Burston have a restraining order out on you? No. Not that I'm aware of. When, when did you realise you'd been had? Uh, I think when About I got the letter in the ago. mail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was absolutely bewildered. I couldn't believe it. And we, we actually had to work through this to work out. And I, I said to James, I think this Roger Muller is a bloody spy. I, I, I just, there is no other logical answer to come back with because we were in meetings with men. Uh, I think six at a table. So there's James and myself, uh, Roger Mueller and his PA and a couple of other people in the meeting. So. It's not James, it's not me, it's probably not the two people that we met with at that particular particular meeting, so one would believe it would have to be him. And yes, we were had. Is One Nation dead in the water now? Sorry? Is One Nation dead in the water now? Not at all, not at all. We, we are absolutely upfront and solid with the people of Australia, and we're going to continue down this path. As I said a moment ago, the Labor Party, the Liberal Party and the Greens have been getting foreign donations forever. And they continue. They... they continue still getting foreign donations from multinational companies in this country. They are still foreign donations. They may have a business here, but I tell you what, none of them pay taxes here. They make more in political donations than they do pay in tax. That is a real sham. And, and, and I, think, I think a lot of people need to understand, and this, this is going out to Australia, and maybe the last thing I ever say in politics, I don't know yet. I don't know if I really want to keep doing this because I couldn't believe that a person like me could be sucked in to the extent that I've been sucked in. I mean, it could happen to any single person in this country. And I, I just want to make this point very, very clear. There are 732 multi multinational companies who pay little to no tax. We're going after them. We're going to make them pay tax. We're going to make sure that the Bradfield scheme is built in Australia. We're going to make sure that immigration is cut back so that the Australian people's voices are actually heard. We're the only party pushing these things and also coal-fired power stations. Have we drawn the heat? Yes, we have, and I can see it through a spy who was instigated from a Middle Eastern country, who has infiltrated our country and got involved in the political system of Australia. And I think that's what the new laws were instigated in this country are all about. Just here is to release all of the footage. Will you release all of your correspondence with uh, Mr Mueller? And sure, very happy to. Absolutely. Very happy, happy to. to that. Do you think it's a good idea to be getting into bed with the NRA, which wants to give everybody machine guns and exploit the victims of massacres for... Uh, to protect cause. We, we listen to everybody in the world. We listen to what journalists have to say. We listen to what the people have to say. We listen to what the Labor Party and the Greens and the Conservatives have to say. We listen to everything. And you take the best information on board and you use the best information and you discard the worst information. I think my greatest faults, and I, and I think I've said this already, apologising to the Australian public about me swearing. Yes, I, I am doing that. Uh, rules and regulations are made to be followed in this country. There are a number of things that were said on that show, and I think there was, I think I mentioned about the uh, balance of power already, so I won't cover that again. Also talking about the PCCC of which I was on, and it was talking about the law. I actually know the law. I understand the law, and I will st always stay on the right side of the law, and I use the terminology on the right side of the knife. I, I said that clearly, and again, it is colourful language that I use, but I'm an Australian and it's the way that I've grown up. It could be my age and I apologise no, if that's the case. David Oldfield has spoken to 7.30. He says that One Nation would take money from Colonel Gaddafi if he's still around and it's a money-making racket. Well, I, I'm sorry I wasn't in when Mr Oldfield was involved in the party and maybe he did take money from Colonel Gaddafi, but that's his issue. You know Colonel Gaddafi's dead and it's probably a better thing for the world. I don't know so much about his country. It's in absolute turmoil at the moment, but the answer to that is it's, it's a silly question. We are here, we have played by every rule and regulation. The Australian Electric Commission, we have followed every rule. We have scrutinised more than any other party in this country. I've actually been audited twice since I was in the last election. Never happened in my whole political career, but when I joined One Nation, we get treated special. Is not being able to hand you a drink a sign of a lack of political judgment? <laughs> well, uh, when, when I finish work, and I hope you'd never drink when you finish work, but we all do, I'm going to put my hand on my heart. 
I, I have drunk. As a young man, I've been to strip clubs. Uh, I've, I've done a whole lot of things that most young men have done in this country. I actually understand Kevin Rudd might have done that too, and he's had a few drinks. I mean, I'm never going to hold that against any human being. When we finish work, I'm like everybody else, and I should have that right, as you should have that right. Where does One Nation put the line and accepting political donations? Well, we've drawn the line with the tobacco companies, and if, and let me make this point very clear too, and if any money had been offered to us from the United States, we would have to present that to Senator Hanson and she would either say yes or no. We never had to do that because we weren't offered any money. But for the record, she has said today that she would never have accepted it. But James, a question for you. Um, yeah. This is another pretty major scandal that you're involved in. How long do you think Pauline's going to put up with this stuff when you're in the headlines for one reason? Look, Harry, it's, it's not anything that Steve and I set out to do. Um, we thought this was a legitimate trip to go and see legitimate companies over in America and meet with legitimate organisations. The only non-legitimate person was a spy working for the Qatari government. And I'm afraid that, look, we've been caught out, we'll put our hands up and say, look, this was an unfortunate catch-out. And I, as I keep saying this, Harry, release the vision in full. Allow the people of this country to be able to see exactly what was said, because the context that they've released is completely wrong. And, I, and I'm not going to underscore anything that was said in those private conversations because we are like everybody in this country. We have to be accountable, we've got to be honest and we've got to tell you the whole story. But we are telling you the whole story. Yes, we've had a few drinks, as most men do after they finish work. Some do, some don't. It's up to yourselves. But we did on that evening and maybe we shouldn't have. In hindsight, and hindsight is a wonderful thing, I have learnt some of the most important lessons that I know our country now has spies, that are backed by those countries overseas that are infiltrating here. And I don't know how many more there are. I don't know how many other places they've got involved in. And we may see a lot more of these stories leading into the federal election. And I believe that's why those rules and regulations that are being changed about political interference in Australia start to need to be taken seriously. Mr Dixon, you said that you want to be in bed with the US. Doesn't that suggest international interference in Australian politics? Absolutely not. We are in bed with the US. You, you do realise we have an ANSYS agreement. But to the extent of getting millions of dollars of funding from US lobby groups. We didn't get any money from any US lobby groups at all. None. But that was the point of the trip. No. We didn't get <laughs> any money from any US lobby groups at all. Not a cent has come to one nation. Of your journey to the US. No, we, we didn't go to China with the Labor Party or the Liberal Party who got money from a communist country and gave away the port of Darwin. No, we didn't go there. We went to the United States, a country that we are in a, an ANZUS agreement with, who we have fought in wars with, who are a country who has saved Australia. Remember what they did for us in the Second World War. We would not be here if it wasn't for the United States and the Battle of the Coral Sea. But the NRA, I mean, that was the whole Well, thing. what you're saying, they are a legitimate organisation as all businesses are in the world. I mean, I'm giving Al Jazeera a bit of a hard time at the moment. You're giving the NRA a hard time. We're all allowed to speak our mind as we should. But I think Al Jazeera have infiltrated and put a spy into Australian politics who have infiltrated over three years. Not three days, three weeks, three months, three years. So I can imagine he must have been paid a huge amount of money I wouldn't know how many millions of dollars that would be to try to bring un one nation undone because I believe, this is my personal opinion, about our policy on immigration. And I call on all members of the parliament to start to discuss immigration with the people of Australia. We're not scared to do it. We've got the guts to say what the people of Australia are thinking. You're also talking about taking social media backing help uh, with social media from the NRA and other lobby groups. Did you receive any social media? Not at all. Are you going to? Not at all. Have you received any in-kind support other than no, donations? No, not at all. And any donations that this party receives, we comply with the Australian Electoral Commission and we fill out those declarations. So you can, you can see it there. Go and have a look at our party. We are as transparent as they come. And, and I just want to make One sure I'm question. covering all the... Ba I, no, James, I've, I've got to cover a few things right. off because I may never get this opportunity again. I don't know whether or not I really want to stay in politics after this episode. It, it frustrates me, but I'm going to possibly tell the truth if I am going out the door 100%. Uh, they've also nailed or tried to nail me about uh, going to Parliament House and taking people from America to dinner in Parliament House. I was a member of Parliament and you can actually take people to Parliament House and have dinner with them too, but I said that and they've made a big issue of that on this program. I mean, seriously, it just lets you know 
how terrible this whole thing is. Anybody can come from anywhere in the world and I can take them to the Parliament House and have dinner and I'll pay for it as well. Thanks guys, well, appreciate that. Ms. Go on, That'll be an issue when she's better. But thank, thank you so much for your time, I greatly appreciate it. I'm sorry about sweating but it's hot. Thank you. Thank you. One Nation officials James Ashby and Steve Dixon responding there to these revelations by Al Jazeera that One Nation had been seeking millions of dollars in donations from the powerful US gun lobby and were being coached on how to weaken gun laws in Australia. Now, they say uh, Roger Muller, this journalist, approached them. They checked him out. They never suspected that he was, as they say, an Australian spy who was there to interfere in Australian politics. Uh, obviously didn't suspect he was a journalist either. One Nation are pushing the line that this is, in fact, the Al Jazeera media organisation that is trying to interfere with Australian politics. Now, they've revealed the initial offer was for Senator Pauline Hanson to attend a sports event, but uh, that meeting with the NRA had been set up. Senator Hanson did not attend, but James Ashby and Steve Dixon did. They say these meetings were organised for them. James Ashby says he has a passion for understanding political techniques. And uh, th this basically ended up being a study tour for him. Now, there's a, a my words, not his. He says these conversations were to look at nothing but their techniques. It wasn't about seeking money. And uh, to clarify, there has been no suggestion that money has exchanged hands here. James Ashby and Steve Dixon are claiming that the footage has not been shown in the right sequence of events. Steve Dixon did apologise for the use of bad language there. The statement from One Nation before this news conference included the line that the matter has been referred to ASIO and the Australian Federal Police due to concerns of foreign interference into Australian politics in the lead-up to the imminent federal election.